Can someone help me remember to do this? This is the fourth video. I have made an entire video with no sound. Hello and welcome to another episode of Curious Cat Crime Sunday with Shelby and sometimes Ziggy. I made a whole video without him, so, or with him. Now I have to make it without him because I left my mic off. So, anyways, today's episode is going to be on Gypsy Rose Blanchard and let's get to it. Gypsy Rose Blanchard grew up with her mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, making claims about her health that resulted in a series of dire diagnoses and medical interventions. However, Gypsy wasn't actually unwell. Her mother had been lying about her symptoms. Experts believe Dee Dee's stem belief stemmed from Munchausen syndrome by proxy, and that she wanted to be a caretaker and she feigned and induced illnesses in her daughter. The truth about Gypsy only came out after Gypsy arranged for her online boyfriend to murder her mother in 2015. Gypsy Rose was born the same year that I was, at 1991. As a baby, Dee Dee claimed that, Dee, that Gypsy had sleep apnea, and at the age of 8, Dee Dee described her daughter as suffering with leukemia and muscular dystrophy, and that she required a wheelchair and a feeding tube. The list of medical problems that Dee Dee related to her daughter would go on into seizures, asthma, and vision and hearing problems. Due to Dee Dee's actions, Gypsy was prescribed a ton of medication and she had to sleep with a breathing machine. She also went through multiple surgeries, including procedures to her eyes, removal of her salivatory glands, and Gypsy's teeth had rotted, perhaps due to the medication missed in salivatory glands or neglect. They were pulled out. Yet the truth was that Gypsy didn't need a feeding tube, didn't need a breathing machine, and didn't have cancer. However, Gypsy was bald. And this is because Dee Dee would shave her head. Experts believe that Dee Dee, Gypsy's mother, had what's called Munchausen syndrome by proxy, also called factitious disorder imposed on another, which also made her dis fabricate her daughter's ill health in order to receive attention and sympathy for the care of a sick child. Why, hello there, sir. Come to join the video? Say hi to everybody? Huh? Yeah? Okay. Let's get back to it. Medical tests often showed inconclusive or contradictory reports and whenever this would happen, Dee Dee would just simply go to a different doctor. Dee Dee had some nurse training, so she was able to tell the doctors exactly what she wanted the illness to mimic and sometimes give her daughter medication that would mimic these symptoms. Dee Dee also seemed charming and that she really cared for her daughter. She was a devoted mother. When, Dee Dee was old en when Gypsy was old enough to talk, Dee Dee instructed her not to volunteer information during their medical appointments. She was always the one relaying Gypsy's fake medical conditions to the doctor. Dee Dee told Gypsy's father, Rod Blanchard, that her daughter had chromosomal disorders and that had led to the many health issues. He applauded her for the wonderful care of being a doting mother. When some of Dee Dee's families noticed that Gypsy didn't seem to need a wheelchair and asked questions, Dee Dee moved them away. Even as a teenager, even when Gypsy was a teenager, Dee Dee still claimed that she was sick and began to lie about Gypsy's age at this point. Dee Dee claimed to be a victim of Hurricane Katrina, so she and Gypsy received assistance to relocate from Louisiana to Missouri in 2005. There, Dee Dee continued to bring Gypsy to doctor's appointments. Hurricane Katrina provided an excuse for the missing medical records. In 2008, Gypsy and Dee Dee moved into their new home in Springfield, Missouri, built by Habitat for Humanity. It was painted pink and had a wheelchair ramp. Gypsy and Dee Dee also received benefits that included charity sponsor visits to concert and Disney World. All along, Dee Dee continued to bask in the attention it received for being a doted caretaker. As G Gypsy grew older, Dee Dee began to lie about her age, going so far as to alter Gypsy's birth certificate. In 2009, an anonymous report was made to authorities stating that Dee Dee's accounts, accounts for Gypsy's ailments had no medical bias. This resulted in two caseworkers visiting the home. However, Dee Dee, being the master manipulator, was able to explain to them that everything was fine. When Gypsy was 14, she went to see a neurologist who came to believe that she was the victim of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. However, he did not act. He did not tell authorities. And this to me makes me wonder. Would this have still happened had he had told someone? I know he says that there wasn't enough evidence to act. However, do you think 
and write in the comments below, do you think that if he had said something and something was done that this would have solved the problem? But Gypsy was still becoming harder for Dee Dee to control. In 2011, Gypsy tried to run away with a man that she met at a sci-fi convention. However, her mother found her through multiple mutual friends and it convinced the man that she was a minor, although she was 19 at the time. According to Gypsy, Dee Dee had smashed her computer and tied her to the bed at night. Gypsy also stated her mother would sometimes hit her and deny her food. But Gypsy managed to eventually get back online. She joined a Christi Christian dating site where she met Nicholas Gajon. Gajon? Gajon. I don't know. I'm going to say it wrong, so I'm just going to call him Nicholas. She told him the truth about her mother's accidents, and she ended up asking him to kill Dee Dee so that they could still be together. On, in June of 2015, he came to her house and abbed Dee Dee while Gypsy waited, ears covered, in the bathroom. After Dee Dee's murder, many people who knew Gypsy wondered, how could she have done such a thing? And if she really could truly walk, why didn't she just get up in public and expose Dee Dee for what she was doing? Gypsy and Nicholas returned to his home in Wisconsin, where they were found by police. Gypsy had twice posted on Facebook account that she shared with her mother, once stating, the B word is dead. She later explained she made these posts because she wanted her mother's body to be discovered. However, in response to that, Gypsy said, and I quote, I couldn't just jump out of the wheelchair because I was afraid and I didn't know what my mother would do. I didn't have anyone to trust, she says. When they were out in public, Dee Dee would constantly hold Gypsy's hand, and when she wanted her to be quiet, she would squeeze that hand. Dr. Mark Fieldman, an expert in Munchausen syndrome by proxy, said of Gypsy's life and actions, the control was total in the same sense that the control of a kidnapped victim sometimes is total. Her daughter was, in essence, a hostage, and I think we can understand the crime that occurred subsequently in terms of a hostage trying to escape a captor. And I quote, the fact that Gypsy had spent her entire life being controlled and monitored by her mother, she wasn't allowed to go to school, though Gypsy was of normal intelligence, Dee Dee told everyone that her daughter had a mental age of seven. As Gypsy's medical records documented the abuse she was subjected to, the lawyer made an arrange for a plea deal and charge that she faced for Dee Dee's death. In 2016, Gypsy pled guilty to second degree murder. She was sentenced to 10 years. I'm so sorry if you can hear that. My cats are playing with my backdrop. Anyways. Let's try that again. In 2016, G Gypsy pled guilty to second-degree murder. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison, though she is scheduled to be released December 28, 2003, I want to say. Nicholas was found guilty of first-degree murder in 2018 and was sentenced to life in prison. Gypsy stated that it was only after Dee Dee's death that she realized the extent of her mother's deception. While Gypsy had known she could walk and eat regular food, she did truly believe she had leukemia. Today, Gypsy is healthy. She enjoys the freedom in prison and says that it's better than a life with Dee Dee. However, when asked by Dr. Phil if she was glad her mother was dead, she stated, I'm glad that I'm out of the situations, but I'm not happy she's dead. Anyways, this has been another episode of Curious Cat Crime Sunday with Shelby. I hope you enjoyed the storytelling, not necessarily the story. If you did, please like and subscribe if you want to leave a comment below on what you would like to see next week. And I hope to hear from you guys soon. Have a great day. Be good to each other. Bye.